The data redundancy pattern. This is also something that exists in a dozen different ways in computer science and especially in data management. So what is this pattern about? Given some data and some storage device, the solution is to use multiple storage devices, store multiple copies of the data redundantly plus some parity information and keep all copies and parity in sync somehow. So we will see later on this actually may be a problem. This may lead to additional effort. So the advantages of the data redundancy pattern are there's a dramatic increase of storage device reliability and the amount of increase of course depends on the type of redundancy on the type of parity information you're using. This may be applied to hard disks. We've already seen that in the context of RAID, also SSDs here. The SSDs are using RAID-like redundancy internally, but you could also combine different SSDs into a RAID-like system as you're doing that with hard disks. For main memory, Hamming codes are used, but you can use that for any storage device, entire systems or even entire data centers. The drawbacks of this pattern are there's an additional write effort. You store more data, so you have to write that. There's an additional parity computation effort. Again, depending on the type of parity, the costs may differ a lot. And there's additional storage required. So the parity has to be stored somewhere or the redundant copies of the data have to be stored somewhere. So those are the drawbacks. You somehow have to balance those two things very carefully. So we've already seen many examples of redundancy. I'd like to show another one and that is data centers. So what is a data center? Well, a data center is basically a building containing many, many servers. Yeah, it contains racks of servers. Inside those servers, you use stuff like RAID, yeah, and you use backups in the data center to make sure that you don't lose any data. So let's call this DC1, data center one. So this data center is connected somehow to the internet. Let's say this is the internet. Yeah, using some cable, of course. So what happens if this cable gets interrupted for whatever reason? It might be due to a problem with the provider. It may be that there's construction work going on. So if this cable gets interrupted, this may result in certain services not being available anymore. So assume a page like Google or Amazon or whatever you can think of being offline all of a sudden. Of course, you can decrease the likelihood of such a failure by using a second link. So you rather connect the data center to the Internet using two links at a time and maybe through different providers. That would be a good idea to start with. But even in that situation, it may be that there's a very unfortunate situation due to a flood, earthquake, fires, whatever. They may destroy the entire data center. That's one option. But what may also happen is, and that happened already in reality, is that in one data center there were construction works going on and one of the machines managed to cut through both lines at the same time. So the data center became offline and the services became offline. So in order to fix that, you need redundancy at a higher level. And that is, you do not only double the links, you do a second data center. You do data center two. And data center two basically is a copy of all data from data center one. Internally, of course, you have the same mechanisms as in the other data center. You have RAID, you have your backup services, that's all fine. But you have this data center in a different geographic position using different links. And this is also somehow connected to the Internet, hopefully with two cables at least. So now if anything goes wrong, be it on the level of the data center, be it that there's a flood, an earthquake, fire, whatever, there's no problem. You can switch to the other data center. The same holds. And of course, for the cables, if the cables are both interrupted, you can still serve pages. You can still access the data hopefully in the second data center. Only if you lose both of them, which is super unlikely, you wouldn't be able to serve web pages anymore. So this is redundancy, data redundancy at the level of data centers.
And this is what big companies do. This is important because for certain types of web pages, so every minute you go offline, you're basically losing money. So in the end, it's cheaper to keep a copy of the data in a different data center in order to be able to switch over quickly rather than risking to lose customers. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you then.